Dory 1, this is Fire Team Delta. Dad's coming home. Welcome to the Military Veteran Dad Podcast, where it is our mission to bring every dad home. I am your host, Ben Colloy. I'm a United States Marine veteran, husband, and a father. We will bring authentic conversations to inspire action in your life so we can close the gap between the dad you are today and the dad you want to be tomorrow. This is the Military Veteran Dad Podcast. Welcome back to another bonus episode, our third one this year. And today we got a special treat. Before we get into that one, I just want to go through a couple quick announcements. And the first announcement is I want to thank you, the dad, for spending time listening to this podcast, taking that time either out of commute or whatever really time you're taking away to listen to this episode or any of the episodes in this podcast to be a supporter. I got to tell you, it means the world to me. When I have dads reach out to me, when I have dads in our Facebook group reach out to me saying what I'm doing matters like that really hits home for me and validates why I'm doing this. And I love to hear that. And I just want to say thank you for listening. Second, I want to just remind you that we have a Facebook group, that this Facebook group is where the biggest idea of the Military Veteran Dad podcast is to create a community and that community can bring dads back together and help take those first steps to coming home. And it's also where if you want to get more in touch with me, if you want to be interact with me more, I'm constantly in there. I'm blogging almost daily in there throughout just random things tonight. As I record this intro, I posted about pretty much a Dante's Inferno of uh, of a night with my three kids and coming out on the other side of that. So just a lot of random things. If you want to just see what life is like in the Chloe household, check out the Facebook group. The link is down in the show notes. And last, I just want to remind that at the bottom of this in the show notes, there is a link to submit a question. If you have a question that you want to ask me or you want to hear my perspective on it or what my take is, go ahead, go down in the show notes, click that link, submit the question, and I almost guarantee I'll feature you in a future episode of the Military Veteran Dad and we'll dive into your question and hopefully you'll understand a little bit more about the question that you want answered and you'll get uh, your name mentioned on the podcast. So without further ado, let's get started. Today's guest is Chris Hoffman. Me and Chris go back to the very beginning of this journey that I was on almost two and a half years ago. Chris was the very first person that I found on the internet, really, in the veteran space. And it sounds hard now that I find out all these people, but it was a really lonely time back then. I spent like two months trying to find someone. And I was like, oh my God, I got this guy out here. He's always online. I can interact with him. And he was the first friend that I had within this space. And I really didn't know anything about what I was doing. I had ideas, but they were really ideas at that point. And I spent two years working with him, mentoring under him, just gaining a friend, doing life together with him. And man is just incredibly valuable as a friend, as a person who can create value and help you clear obstacles. And just a little bit of background on Chris. Chris is a Marine Corps combat veteran. He is the founder of Vet Training and Coaching, which exists to empower vets to identify execute, and accomplish their next mission. Chris is a passion-driven person, coach, trainer, podcaster, and the author of the ebook, 10 Steps, 10 Steps to Predict the Success Out of the Uniform. He has a weekly podcast, The Ambitious Vet, reaches an average of 1,000 viewers a week as he digs into the trenches with today's top-performing veterans living a passion-driven life out of the uniform. Chris holds a psychology degree, veteran development certificate from Blue Rio Strategies, and a personality profile certification for Golden LLC. He's been featured on Shift Magazine, Military by Owner, Advertising, and Inc.com. Amazon bestseller, as we mentioned. He's also been San Diego Business Journal 2018 veteran and military entrepreneur finalist. And also, as I was thinking through this, uh, if you want to hear what I sounded like in the very beginning, go check out his podcast. I believe it's like episode six. I was super filled with energy. I talked way too much. But if you want to see what the raw Ben Cloy was two years ago before I even considered doing a podcast, go check out his podcast. Check out the very first ep- or like episode number six, and you can get the pre Ben Cloy that shows up now on this podcast. And without further ado, Chris is going to bring some major value. He's going to bring a story that's super powerful. I asked the right question that pretty much opened him up and he has he's not a dad yet but he has a story that we can all relate to of not having a dad and what that did for him or what didn't give him and why he joined the marine corps 
and, and know you're going to love it. And he's got a special gift for us at the end for a new program that he's launching. That's part of his vet training and coaching. And so let's just get this started with Chris Hoffman. Welcome to the show, Chris. Hey, Ben. It's good to be here, man. I've been listening to the podcast um, over and over again, man. And I just, I, I, what I love about this show is how much you pull, you know, passion out of, out of all of your veteran, veterans' hearts and stuff like that, man. I really believe in what you're doing. So it's a complete honor to be on here. And it's more even crazy of how this interview is happening that, what, is it now almost three years ago that I randomly stalked you on Facebook and started commenting on your Facebooks and started becoming friends and wanting to uh, help you out with what you were doing? Yeah, but I still remember that hour conversation outside of a 24-hour fitness over here in San Diego, where I thought I was going to be getting a workout in, but I wind up having one of the most extraordinary conversations um, with you that I, you know, definitely made up for the workout, man. So I appreciate you doing that. And Chris is not a dad, but he is on the podcast today to share his story of how he became the leader of the Ambitious Vet Tribe. And that story has a lot of tones related to being a military veteran dad. And as we pull those threads back, you'll easily be able to see why Chris is the perfect fit to tell his story. And then also he has a program that he's launching this October that helps veterans that have a burning war cry in their belly to do something more out of the uniform. And he helps them execute those dreams and deliver on that mission. Did I explain it pre pretty good there, Chris? Uh, better than I ever would. <laughs> That's awesome. So Chris, we're going we're gonna to start off with a home run out of the park here. So a long time ago, I learned that your father wasn't a part of your life. Go ahead and unpack a little bit what early on that meant to you of before joining the military, of why you joined. Mm, going deep already. I love it. Um, yeah, Ben, I mean, um, you know, one years old, uh, my father wound up leaving me. And at that, at that moment, obviously, I didn't, I didn't know the impact that would make long term, right? Um, you know, all I knew is that I didn't have a father and I needed to, you know, you know, just kind of start figuring out stuff myself. My, throughout my whole childhood, um, you know, I had a mother that was working three jobs, doing everything that she could. Um, and I was pretty much just handed off to my grandparents for most of my childhood. And I just saw multiple men's faces throughout my upbringing. And I would say until about eight to nine years old, whenever I had my two younger brothers from um, a man that my mom wound up getting in a relationship with for until I joined the United States Marine Corps when I was 19 in 2008. Um, you know, I was seeing random faces all over, you know, all, you know, just throughout my life. And I just, I just remember realized that like, I can't trust men. So, um, I was, you know, I was one of those guys in high school and middle school that, you know, I just, I, you know, most of my friends, uh, were women. And I just felt more connected to them. And, um, you know, it, it was just weird because I would be, get around men, but I would be around, you know, friends that are men that wouldn't treat me very well. And it was weird, but it was a, a it was a, a common thing that like, you know, we were, I was just surrounding myself with circle, circle of men that were just, just not, not treating themselves well. And I was like, wow. I mean, I didn't notice it till later on in life, obviously, but yeah, I mean, I mean, just seeing, um, you know, random men's faces till I was like, um, seven to nine years old till my mom met the guy she spent like 10 years with. Um, you know, I was just like, wow, like what, what is this life about? I had to grow up at a very young age. And then once my two younger brothers, um, you know, decided to pop out, um, you know, I had to start pulling my weight in the family. So I got my, I started my first business when I was like 13 years old, where I, I literally had two other friends, um, we were mowing lawns for $20 a pop just to make sure that my brothers were being fed. They became my new why in that mess, messy situation. Now, to talk about leading up to joining the United States Marine Corps is, you know, I was a guy in high school that had a very promising baseball career. But one thing that humbled me um, was um, my low self-esteem, um, my low confidence and stuff like that. And I'm 100% you know, certain now at this stage of my life, being 31 years old, doing, you know, getting psychology education, going through all the personal and professional development that I've gone through, that, you know, all that stemmed from never having that direction, that guidance, that masculine energy of like, this is how you do things. This is how you logically think through things. And I was always like more of a feeler, more of an empath because of my, you know, my mother was the one that was guiding me through life. And, um, you know, I just remember, you know, 
whenever I, I saw that, you know, the baseball career wasn't going to pan out because I was a great offensive player, Ben, but I, I, I sucked at, uh, you know, I sucked at, you know, defense. Like I just couldn't, I, I just was missing the, the key components to actually being able to get to where I wanted to be in baseball. So long story short, I was watching TV one night and I just remember seeing, you know, those, you know, Ben, I know you're a United States Marine veteran as well. I remember those commercials where you saw those guys as climbing a mountain, climbing the mountain and somewhere in Colorado or Utah. And you're just like, yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They just climbing a mountain at the top, they're holding a sword. And then all of a sudden they transform in the United States Marine uniform. All of a sudden I was just like, that's what a man is. I was like, oh my gosh, I figured it out. That's who I want to become. And at this stage in my life, once I realized that my baseball career wasn't, you know, panning out and I was 18 years old out of high school, um, I turned into a really bad alcoholic. I was coming home, um, you know, hitting, you know, literally starting fist fights with my stepdad, because at that point I became so overprotective over my mother that, um, you know, I thought every man was going to abuse her because we had a very abusive upbringing, both mentally and physically. And I was just drinking a lot of whiskey, just was going nowhere fast, had no sense of direction, no passion for life. And I just was super angry. And when I saw that commercial, I was like, this is my way out. This is my way of actually showing my my younger brothers, um, that like we can get out of the small town in you know, St. Charles, Missouri and, um, you know, really actually chase after what we really wanted. And that, at that point I wanted to climb the mountain. I wanted to be holding the sword and I wanted to, you know, be wearing those dress blues, um, uniform. So that's whenever I joined, um, in 2008. When you were living through those years, have you ever thought about the story that you were telling yourself that your actions were reinforcing, but maybe you consciously weren't aware of what story or what story you were telling yourself of who you were? That's a, that's a really good question. Um, I mean, uh, you know, if I were to reflect on it, the thing that pops up in my head right, right now in this moment, is like, I just never felt good enough. Um, and I'm sure there's a lot of listeners that are listening inside this podcast that, you know, may, may or may not had a father growing up. And it's just like, there's like this empty void inside your heart where you start overcompensating. You, you know, you you may be like me where I, you start being a class clown, trying to get attention by any means possible. And it's all trying to fill this empty void that only having that missing father, or in my case, you know, my faith, having a stronger relationship with God could help guide me into the right direction on not having to overcompensate. So I would say the the story that I was telling myself is I just wasn't good enough. If my father was never in my life, you know, and I wasn't good enough for him, why would it be good enough for a woman? Why would it be good enough for a successful career? And I just got caught up in what it's called a vicious circle where I kept self-sabotaging my life, Ben. It wasn't, it wasn't fun. And there was a, I think there was a theme when you were leading up to it that it almost sounded like you were running from something just as much as you wanted that uniform to happen on top of that mountain. It, uh, the, another story is that I could run from this story and somehow break free of it. Yeah, that that's definitely a good point. I mean, yeah, I mean, um, I was always looking at, you know, what's the next trophy to chase? Um, what's the next achievement to, to get? Cause maybe that would bring my father back into my life. Yeah. Um, that, this is something that we hit on a lot with active duty dads. And I'm pretty sure no, being known you for the last three years, this is true from the, our conversations is that identity that you wrapped onto yourself from the uniform is enough glue to hold you together in almost all cases. And it's really on the other side of that transition. When you strip that uniform and you talk about it in your podcast all the time, when you go from Superman to Clark Kent, Clark Kent no longer knows who he is, but he still has that same story and that same label that he was running from and somehow it just skipped four years and I'm right back where I started. Oh, that's, that's spot on Ben. Absolutely. And so take us from when you became Clark Kent, there was a dark time that you went through from that time of being Clark Kent to, uh, to a very, uh, almost ending it all for you. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to go deeper. I love it. So yeah, I mean, um, let's rock and roll. Um, so yeah, so, you know, when I first got out of the uniform, um, I was one of those that, you know, decided to get out after four years. Um, you know, I got to live in Japan for a year and a half, um, you know, get do get all my craziness <laughs> out of my out of my soul. And then I also got to do a seven month deployment in Afghanistan being a 240 uh, Bravo gunner, a part of a quick reaction force of a small fob out there. And it wasn't until 
um, the sergeant that was in charge of me got in my face and was just like, Chris, you're one of the most sloppiest Marines I've ever met in my life. Um, read this book. And the book he threw to me was Think and Grow Rich. At that stage, I was just like, I don't care about being rich. I just want to, you know, kill bodies. I was like this super alpha, you know, just super inauthentic Marine that was like trying to be tough when he really wasn't tough. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, when he threw that book at me, I just, I had nothing better to do besides work out, eat cliff bars, drink rippets, and, um, you know, dive into that book. And what that book did is expanded my mindset, had me start seeing what was possible in life versus all the limitations that was happening. So I decided to get out. Now, when I got out, I found out very quickly that free resources get free results. What does that mean? If you're a listener in here, you're just like, Chris, what are you talking about? Right? Well, I'm talking about, look, um, you know, writing resumes, get it, you know, doing interviews, getting interview training, and um, also learning how to network will get you your first or second job. No problem. But this is one thing that I found in 2000, at the end of 2014, when I was laid off after my first job for being overly professional and just not having the emotional intelligence to connect with people. Cause you know, us Marines were so mission oriented that all we want to do is get stuff done. And at work, we're just not really playing around, or at least I wasn't. And, um, you know, I was all about play after I got the mission done. Now, once I got laid off, I went into a deep, deep, dark sense of um, depression. And what that looked like for me is I just, you know, I, I was embarrassed. I went from this, you know, um, you know, kind of shit hot Marine that was getting married choice promoted was a black belt and Marine Corps mixed martial arts and just a hero to my brothers. Remember going back to be in this interview, they became my new why. So like being someone that was jobless, sleeping on a wrestling mat and living in a one bedroom apartment in the most cheapest part of San Diego, um, that I couldn't afford. And, um, at the late of 2014, I decided to, you know, um, you know, try to commit suicide two times. And in that moment, it was an all time low because I didn't want to admit to my family that I was jobless, didn't know what I was doing because I thought I would be an embarrassment, if that makes sense. It does. And for the dads listening out there, I want to speak to you for a moment. What he just said there is that he was afraid to admit that he didn't have it together. If you're an avid listener in episode 34 with Sarah Roberts, her husband had the same mindset that when your ego is so high strung that you no longer can reveal a weakness to someone. And in that episode, we talked about that he, his life was literally crumbling around. The, G, the GI Bill was asking for their money back. He had just dropped out of school. He hadn't told anybody that. And that was about a week before he ended up taking his own life. And so if you're at any points of these where you feel that you can't hold it all in and you're trying to hold it all in, you're not meant to hold it all in. And if you're a fan of this podcast, you've heard me say that many, many times. We are not meant to carry everything that life gives us. And me and Chris both being in the Marines, in the Marines, if you couldn't lift it, that just means you didn't have enough Marines trying. And that same thing applies to life. No matter what you're carrying on your shoulders, you're meant to share the load. And for 3,000 years, we did life in tribes. And in the last 100, we thought we could do it alone. And that's what Chris is speaking to, that he was trying to do it alone and trying to present to the world that he had it all together. And that is the recipe for disaster. And in the case for Sarah Roberts, he took his own life and he took it with his daughter sleeping 10 feet away. So if there is anything you're picking up on here, know that you can't do life alone. And if you're in that pit, find a rope, find a hand and reach out to someone. Is there someone that you can, do you remember was that person that reached out to you, Chris? Oh, that's amazing. First thing that popped up is the interview I just did on the Ambitious Vet podcast literally last week. Um, you know, for those of your listeners, I am um, a spiritual guy. I wouldn't say a Christian, but I do go to Christian services. And I ran into the guy that shifted my life back in 2014 after I had those two, two attempted um, suicide attempts. And, um, you know, his name was Pete Sanchez the third. And at that stage, I was in um, my very first network marketing company. And this guy just came back from a, a six month honeymoon with his brand new bride. And he had, you know, tons of opportunities. Everyone looked up to him and he was still one of the most humblest guys that just led from how do I serve people. And I was, wow, I want to be like that guy. And, um, you know, he actually introduced me to resources that I had to start learning to invest in myself. Like you said, give up my ego, give up my pride and realize that like, yeah, I mean, 
writing resumes, you know, learning how to interview and networking, yes, are valuable, but also I have to start diving into myself, start under peeling back the layers and actually figuring out what matters most to me, not just for other people. Because when I'm operating from other people, I start people pleasing. And then we all know that's a, you know, a never ending road of exhaustion and just reactivity. And um, yeah, P. Sanchez shifted my life. And, you know, I'm going to share this podcast episode with him whenever you get this out. And just, um, you know, just for guys like that, that are willing to stand for someone that may not look, you know, valuable in the moment. That, at that stage in my life, Ben, I was wearing hoodies, long hair, didn't care about my personal hygiene, angry. I was super buff because I think at that stage I was in my, my fitness modeling days, I was still taking steroids. So I was super buff, but I was just super antisocial. If I can't even can, imagine wear long hair. If you could even believe that. Yeah, I know. It's like totally opposite. And he actually, you know, he's totally pivoted my life and I would not be anywhere where I am today if it wasn't for him to be like, hey, Chris, um, you know, let's, let's pull you out of this hole, man. Here's my hand. And that hole can be so dark and it only takes one flashlight, one speck of light to show someone the right way. And there's something that we talk a lot about on the podcast that you just like I just mentioned, you can't do it alone. And when you break into those mindsets, you need that friend. And part of the, one of the things I say often is be the friend you wish you had that Mm -hmm. whenever you run into a veteran, especially a veteran, because that's where your bond is together. Always question what it took for that person to take their, put their pants on that day and always try to leave that person better than you met them when you first met them with some either advice or just friendship, because literally just saying hello and how you are, that could be the one thing that makes them not do what they were thinking about. And you never know. So you always have to have that mindset. You never know what it, someone, what, what it took for someone to put their pants on that day. And the same thing, he could have had the same thing. He could have just been like, he just looks like an average guy, but inside his heart was completely hollow. And there are super people on this planet that have a superpower that can see that way past the ego. And that's what he gave you. And it was a gift. And that gift is so powerful when you start figuring out if, you have that gift to give it to other veterans because you can literally change someone's life with just a simple conversation. Boom. Love it. Love it, Ben. So if we move a little bit fast forward a little bit, you, so you go through a, the pit, you, you have your hand held out and you have someone pull you out of that. What transpires into the point where you are today, where you really figured out where that, that burning fire, once you figured out how to light that spark again, put the pieces together for how you got to where you are now with the ambitious vet tribe. Yeah, it's a great question. So I had to start realizing that, um, you know, I had to stop trying to please other people. Um, you know, once I started getting things rolling, um, network marketing was the first, you know, avenue that introduced me to personal development and actually investing in yourself and, you know, start learning what you value most in life and understanding what your belief systems are and even breaking through a lot of limited beliefs and under, un, uncovering those blind spots that stop you in your life, career, or business. And, uh, you know, here's the thing, man, as I tell any ambitious vet that comes through to our tribe, that's looking to expand, connect and make a bigger impact out of the uniform once they've realized, you know, how to create that stability is, um, you know, you just got to start learning how to pay to play. And here's, here's a story for you. If you're just like, why do I pay to play if I'm a veteran and I have all these abundance of resources? Well, this is why, because when you start paying to play, you start being around people that have more resources and are emotionally invested in you getting results in your life. Here's a story. Once I started getting things moving, right? After he started sharing like resources like the Landmark Worldwide, um, and success resources, and all these other programs I started investing into my mindset, my business acumen, and just how to actually start operating from my core genius versus, you know, just having people tell me what I needed to do. You know, I started creating more results. I had passion. I started being more proactive to the daily problems, the conflict that was popping up in my life, and I could could really start getting ahead of some of the problems. So, here's a story. So, I invest 
$10,000 into this one program called Life Directions back in, I think, 2000, at the end of 2015, as we started getting the network marketing business going. And um, I was finishing up a psychology degree. And, it, you know, I had some cash flow there. And um, I invested $10,000 into this Life Directions course. And, uh, you know, at this one point of this program, the trainer was up in front of the room and he's just like, you know, you're either swimming with the current of life or you're swimming against the current of life. What are you doing? What are you doing at this point of your life? And then when he said that, it hit me and I was like, wow. I was just like, I feel like I have to really fight to create results that I really want in my life. And at that point, Ben, I had, you know, I was making, you know, like two grand residual income in network marketing, had a team in like, you know, five states, was traveling, training sales teams in network marketing. I was finishing my psychology degree at National University. And, uh, you know, I was, you know, I, I was, I was, I was making some good money at that point based on my, my, my income to debt ratio. And I was like, yeah, but I feel like I still have to fight. Why do I feel like I'm swimming against the curtain? Uh, you know, just like, why are opportunities not flowing to me? And then he was just like, look, you've got a brand, which you've mastered. And I was just like, whoa, I was like, <laughs> I was like, what if I mastered at this point? And to me at that point, I couldn't, I couldn't cognitively comprehend, like at that point, what have I mastered? And, um, you know, when I sat down and did the exercises and learned the practical self knowledge, um, of what it takes to actually understand, you know, who you are from the inside out, I started realizing that, wow, I've mastered the transition. And I was just like, okay, how do I, how do I start formulating? How do I start uncovering the needs, pains, and desires and start packaging how I did it to help veterans start creating fulfilling results faster than later. So to answer your question, Ben, it was really, you know, giving up my pride and ego and starting to pay to play to be around some of the top performing people in the world that still had a heart for veterans. And, and I leveraged that. The thing is, man, I leveraged that, that they had such a big heart for veterans because every time they heard a veteran paying to play, they knew that veteran was super serious on their next mission. I literally remember multiple conversations, multimillionaires at this conference, and they were just like, wow, you spent like all the money you had to be here? What's your mission? I'd tell them. And they're just like, wow, a veteran actually paying to play when you have all those free resources? I was like, yeah. I mean, free resources led me to two failed suicide attempts. Why would I continue free resources whenever I want to be like you guys? And the rest was history, man. Um, you know, I wind up, you know, getting to a point where I didn't have to be doing all this stuff and overcompensating. And I started learning how to goal set from what I value most in life, which narrowed the, the time gap on getting the results actually fulfilled me. All of a sudden, I didn't want to be a millionaire anymore. I just wanted to be able to help veterans get unstuck and unstoppable and actually on what matters most to them. And then the rest, the rest is naturally flowed. And I finally felt like I was swimming with the current of life, Ben. I love that. And you reminded me of a question that I want to ask you before that. I want to give it a backstory though. So John Lee Dumas is the host of EO Fire. And I recently had the chance to meet him in person. It reminded me of this moment. And I told him this story about how it empowered me to be, get to where I am today as his host. And being an uh, officer in the army serving in Iraq, he lost four members of his uh, platoon or uh, command. And that was essentially in his mind, he failed his mission. That was one of his missions, bring everybody home. And he was back receiving the, the caskets in the United States. And he puts their hand on their coffin and commits that he will always create a life worthy of the sacrifice that they gave him. And he's measured everything he's done in life by that commitment. And it inspired me to reflect that my defining moment is when I joined the Marine Corps. I was ready to go to the Air Force two weeks away. And somehow a, a Marine recruiter shows up at my church picnic and the rest is history that two weeks later, I weigh my right hand for the Marine Corps and do something that was scary as hell. Never done anything like that. I, was, I would have been easily voted least likely to join the Marine Corps. Mm -hmm. And I've always measured by that doing something bigger. I got out of the Marine Corps for the exact same reason. So I asked you, Chris, what is your defining moment when you look back to measure when you think of where you are today versus where you think you need to be? Is there one moment that you look on that to reflect towards? Hmm. Let me, let me just sit with that real quick. Um, the defining moment. I mean, when I, when I sit there and think about it, it was the moment whenever I was taking a program for Landmark Worldwide. It's, uh, was their introduction leaders program where, um, 
you know, only 3% of, of people um, actually go, you know, or go through their initiation program, which is Landmark Forum, and go through that program. It's one of the most elite leadership programs you can take and one of the most inexpensive. So if your listeners are have heard of Landmark and they haven't took an instruction leadership program, do it, do it, do it. And I remember one of these sessions where, you know, the leader, the classroom leader of this program was just like, you know, Chris, stand up. And I was like, okay. And I got up and, you know, he was just like, what can I count on you for to create in the world? Cause this life isn't for you. And I was like, Oh, what are you talking about? I still have the ego thing. Still, how do you know me? (laughs) You know, you know, like we always have that ego thing going on. And he's like, what can I count on you for to create in the world from, you know, this program? And I was just like, Hmm. Um, and I just sat with it and I was just like, you know what? You know, I want to empower, you know, veterans, military leaders that are three plus years out of the uniform that have gotten stability, right? Have figured out how to pay the bills, but just aren't satisfied on, you know, they're unfulfilled and they have no sense of direction on, on actually execute on what matters most to them. I want to empower veterans. And he was like, would that fulfill you? And I was just like, huh? Yeah, it would. And he's like, good. I'm going to hold you account to that. And then from that day forward, I just, my whole intention was to fulfill on that core purpose, that mission, right? So for your listeners, I would be thinking about what is your personal mission statement? I I interviewed Noble Gibbons from 360 uh, Movement, amazing guy, tons of passion. I had to like adjust myself and and interviewing that guy. And you should definitely interview him, Ben, if you haven't already. And, um, you know, he was just like the mission statement guides your behaviors. If you don't have a mission, how the hell do you expect to start creating strategies, tactics, and you know productive habits towards a mission? So if you don't have a mission statement, if you're listening to this podcast, that's what's going to ultimately guide your behaviors on fulfilling on what matters most to you. That is, I've never heard you tell that story. So somehow that was always missed out of our conversation, but that's essentially, uh, that explains exactly why you are where you are today. Hmm. If we fast forward, let's dive into what you've learned so far running the Ambitious Vet Tribe. So there's a couple terms that you've, you're really coined for of landmines and golden grenades. So let's start with some of the landmines because I think those will resonate because there's dads out there listening to this podcast right now continuing to hit them. Somehow they haven't lost their legs. Sometimes you do and you got to figure out how to put it back together. Um, so what are the, some of the biggest landmines holding people back from finding that war cry out of the uniform? Yeah. So, I mean, um, you know, let's first define what a landmine is, right? So a landmine, if you got to the source of this, uh, of this, the, of this concept, a landmine is anything that's stopping you from actually progressing in life, career, or business. Now, mine per, my personally is self-doubt. I wake up and like literally Ben, Maggie, my girlfriend, uh, for those of the listeners that are listening to this, you know, she, she's like, Hey, get out there and do your morning routine. And because I can tell like, you're just not confident, stuff like that, get back comfortable in who you are. So I wake up in self-doubt, just doubting myself and not in a positive state, right? So what I do is I ha- I put in habits and routines to get ahead of that. Now, I want to share a story from a few veterans that have actually gone through our programs at Vet Training Coaching. And um, our last Ambitious Vet Sprint, actually, we had someone come through that has one of the top 300 podcasts. If you heard it, um, you you know, a lot of people know what it is. And, um, you know, it was like the fifth or sixth session. He revealed that his landmine was communication with his wife. For those of you guys that are listening to this, you may just be like, wow, like, what do you mean? That can stop me? Yes. You know, for those of you that have kids and, you know, have a committed relationship. Yes, it can stop you. And in fact, disempower you to where you don't have a higher quality of life, which affects your follow through and your effectiveness and efficiency in your life. So long story short, inside of this, our program, his landmine was, um, you know, let's go back real quick. His primary aim, his goals that he was aiming at was taking pressure off his finances, right? Now, the landmine that popped up in him pursuing his primary aim, gaining sniper-like focus on what he what matters most in his life, was his lack of communication around finances with his wife. They got they were in a lot more debt than what he was actually telling her. They were they didn't have nearly as much cash flow month by month than what he was telling her. 
And it had them not be sleeping in the same bed for three years because he was so ashamed to actually communicate with her. So uh, to answer your question, a landmine is anything that is stopping you from living the life that you want right now. And for those of you that are listening to this right now, you may not know what life you want to be living right now. And that's totally fine too. In our programs, we help you identify that mission and your primary aims and help you gain sniper life focus on executing on that. I love that. And it's a perfect example that I'm sure hit at least one or two dads out there listening because that communication and tied to ego is a perfect recipe for disaster because there, when, especially there's a couple different things that dads out there have done that I've learned through so far is that when you're serving and you have a family, you sacrifice and put that your military service is a noble sacrifice of your family time. So you keep borrowing it like a credit card debt almost, <laughs> and you keep building it up and eventually it goes bankrupt. And eventually your marriage goes bankrupt. You can only borrow so much. These are landmines that you're consciously choosing, but you're not actually aware that it's a choice. It's a subconscious choice that you actually had a choice and you just chose to put a space in between you and your family. And it, that's really the recipe for where you get lost on the other side. And the biggest takeaway for me doing these podcast episodes is that's where we get lost because we don't focus on our legacy of our family, which is really the best place to have impact in this world. So if this uh, veteran had communication issues, that was directly affecting his ability to create a legacy worthy of his name being attached to it on the other side of transition. So if we switch to golden grenades, what are some of the biggest golden grenades that you've learned through igniting that passion in someone in a veteran? Well, one thing that you know comes to mind right now, if you don't know your why, you can never live anyhow, right? If you don't know why you're waking up every morning, if you don't know why you know, you're choosing to go for a run at four o'clock in the afternoon, um, you know, you're going to kind of start getting lost, confused, and frustrated very quickly in your life. So, you know, I always say that if you want to restore your passion three plus years out of the uniform, start asking yourself the why questions. You know, when I was back, you know, been sales training um, for a software real estate marketing company out here in San Diego, California, I would take every new sales rep that came through my training program. Um, you know, I would ask them the, th I think it was like the three layer deep why, right? Because your why is never the first. Well, why are you doing that? Like I used to have sales reps come into, you know, my classroom and I, they would just be like, I was like, why are you here? It'd be the first question I asked them. You know, that's a Marine way of communicating, just straightforward. <laughs> why are you what? here? Well, why are you here? And, um, you know, you know, this 22 year old fresh out of college, um, was just like, you know, I'm here to make money. I'm like, okay. Yeah. Yeah, you can make money here. There's a base pay here, but why are you really here? And they were just like, um, well, I mean, I got to pay bills. I was like, okay, that, that, that we're getting there. I was like, but why do you need to pay bills? And they were just like, well, I want to make my family proud. And then all of a sudden you see people light up and that's like the why that's how you dive in that trend intrinsic motivation as psychologists would call it. Right. And, um, that's how you just start seeing new rooms for action. And whenever you're not lit up, right? Like right now I can't see Ben and I, I'm like bringing tons of passion into the mic right now because, you know, when you get present to why you do things, actions just, just start showing up the right people, all of that. I always say that the person that's the most passionate in any networking event, any conference, any room that you choose to step into, people are going to pay attention to that person. You don't have to have the right things to say, a script to follow or anything. People follow people on fire. And I would, you know, for your listeners, I would challenge them to, you know, ask the three layer why question for themselves. As soon as they light up in front of somebody, that's why they're doing it. So let's unpack that a little bit and get a little teaser on what your program actually will deliver. So if you've most people probably have not heard the question of why, and it was brought famous because of Simon Sinek's book, Start With Why. And so if we go through the process of unpacking three whys and we get to the core, the next question, I almost joke about it. It's like a curse question because then someone's like, well, what are you passionate about? 
I would say 80% of the population in the United States doesn't even have never even paused for a moment to consider that question. And then once you ask them it, they can't stop thinking about it. So what exists between the, the passion gap? Because sometimes you could live three years without hitting your passion. For, I'm a perfect example. I was swimming in the, the action before I actually figured out the passion. So if we start with the why, what, what, do you, what steps do you say to go from the why to help get towards or point your compass in the right direction for that passion? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. So you've got to go, you've, you've got to have the framework. So one thing that I believe in and what I teach any veterans that come into, you know, our programs or, you know, read our books, listen to our podcasts or whatever, is I tell them this, you know, the why is only the first step. It gets you into your intrinsic motivation, but you've got to have frameworks to follow, roadmaps to follow. See, I'm a big believer in positive psychology, right? Being, you know, years in psychology, human development, almost close to 10 years of the transformative work over here on my part. You know, I realized that like veterans aren't broken, right? We have intangibles that are just waiting to be awoken right? Um, strategic planning is, is definitely one that I see consistently in every veteran. We can, we can think through almost everything. Civilians, you know, to be quite honest, are just a little bit lazy with their critical thinking skills. So, you know, I would say the why would get, get you to the starting point of actually taking action. The why would have you start looking at resources like our Ambitious Vet Sprint that launched on October 23rd, 2019, because it would be the next right logical step. Now, how do we go from knowing our why and being, um, you know, you know, and getting excited about it? Well, we've got to start figuring out, okay, now this is why we're doing it. Let's use the, let's use this sales rep example, right? So right when that sales rep was just like, I want to make my family proud. Okay. How do we quantify that? Right? So what is your primary aim? Right. So when we get people inside this 12 week sprint, it's like, okay, what does success look like to you at the end of this three months? What is your three big three primary aims? What does making your family proud look like? Once we can establish that, then we can start teaching strategies and tactics. Now, one thing that I do inside the sprint is I have um, any veteran that goes through it take the initial assessment called the VAL assessment that I'm certified in that allows them to start understanding what they value most. For us Marines, then you know that honor, courage, commitment, we were sitting there doing push-ups every single day and it was ingrained in our DNA that we were operating from honor, courage, and commitment. Now, why aren't more veterans operating from their core values? Why is because they're naturally institutionalized by whatever next company that they're involved in and aligning with their values. They never know how to actually operate from theirs, right? So we want to help them understand, you know, their values from there. It's how do you start shaping productive behaviors, right? From those core values. So you can actually do the decision-making, the problem solving and the conflict management to keep you unstuck and unstoppable towards achieving those primary aims that you set out from the beginning. Now, after that, guess what's going to pop up as you're operating from your core values? Because this is a new muscle you're trying on and no one does this perfectly. In fact, a lot of people that get inside the sprint were just like, wow, this is something I never expected. And I was like, hey, I get it. And uh, Ben, I'm sure you're one of those. And, uh, you know, it's, you know, as you're taking, diving into the trenches with this fire team inside this sprint and learning from each other and you know, really you know, building camaraderie through misery, just like we did in boot camp and, you know, however long you served, you start realizing landmines that you didn't know that were there because you're having people give you perspective on the things that are stopping you inside this program. So to answer your question, you know, it's starting with why that's, what's going to get you into action, but then you've got to learn what your primary aims are, start assessing yourself on understanding, okay, how do I take it day by day, do the decision making, the conflict management, the problem solving, and then how do I start shaping positive habits and routines from those while being proactive to the obstacles, the challenges, the insecurities that pop up in our daily life as we pursue and being a top performing veteran. Does that make sense? Absolutely. And it's one of my uh, more famous or one of the colloisms that I repeat more often and I always love lighthouse analogies. I'm not sure where it comes from, but I always love them. And when I first did the core value exercise, a cloism popped in my head that lighthouses are like the, the, your core, they, they're, on the sea of life, your core values allow you to find your way back home. And 
the seas are going to be rough. And as you're trying to find your why, move towards a passion, move towards a goal, you really need to know which way is north. And your lighthouse will always tell you where land is because that's where safe, that's where your safety is. That's where you're going to feel comfortable. And there's times where you got to go back to that moment of comfort while you're on the sea of life and you can get lost out there. And that's when you get lost and you don't deal with anything. And one thing that I've learned interviewing 38 people on this podcast is that the single best muscle that you can exercise, and a lot of this is hard, but I like to describe it as you just got to put in the reps, just like you put in the reps of the gym. A lot of this, you just got to put in the reps and exercise it over and over and over and you'll eventually get clear. And the one thing that's predicted more success in the last one month, three, we had nine months of this podcast has been my ability to talk to people. And it's my single favorite transition advice for anybody that if you want a successful transition, the one muscle that I always tell people to start with, because the why can maybe overwhelm them. Maybe the passion was going, is going to crash their OS and blue screen them. But the one way that they're going to figure out those other two without telling them is I always go to figure out how to talk to as many strangers as possible in the most comfortable version of yourself and just be you because so much of your life is stuck and you can't move it forward unless you're willing to talk to someone because you are one person away from finding that person like a Chris Hoffman or like anybody. You could be walking on a subway and there could be a Chris Hoffman right next to you and you don't know it because you're afraid to say hello and ask what, what's, how's the weather this morning or what's going on or where are you headed. I've had so many random conversations happen from just being out there, talking to people and just being the friend that I wish I had five years ago because damn, if I could, if that was the one thing that I would have had when I transitioned, I would be light years from where I am today because that skill, putting in the reps and talking to people, even just getting more comfortable talking to you and telling my story, it's really predicted the more success of this podcast. And it literally connects me with more and more people that can help me connect with my podcast. So, and, but that none of that happens if you don't talk to people, it's literally the best predictor of all your success to happen is if you can't talk to people, you're going to be standing still no matter how much you learn. Hmm. Amen to that. <laughs> Mic drop. I love it. Love it. Yeah. I mean, um, I would only, I would only add to that is I, I still remember the, the moment where you were sharing your dream at last year's military amateur conference and, um, how that feedback loop, cause I, you know, I'm a psychology guy, um, that feedback loop that came back to you, I just remember that passion being ignited. And I was just like, Oh gosh, watch out. Ben's going to become a beast in the next 12 months. And, uh, you know, brother, we're just witnessing your growth and the impact you're making on this podcast. I mean, it's just a complete honor, um, to be a part of your mission, brother. And I had to connect with people and talk to people. And it was that real emotion, the real world, like the, I'm sure you've learned as well. Like the worst part about making an online business is you can't succeed doing it online. You need to have the physical connections in the real world because that's where you get your messaging better. That's where you build your friendships. That's where you just strengthen who you are and you get confident on the words that you're putting together. Like you can't just rattle off a perfect speech. You have to have those thought patterns already connected in your brain. So that way you don't have the ums and oohs and ahs while you're up there on stage. That doesn't happen unless you're talking to people. Hmm. So go ahead and unpack a little bit of more bit of the program and just go through the quick stages of what your program has for the, is it, it's still nine weeks or how many weeks is it? So it's still 12 weeks. 12 um, weeks. Yeah. So, I mean, um, you know, without getting too far into the details, I want to talk about just like some results and veterans have been getting right. the first, first two sprints. Right. Um, you know, the first one, um, you know, I had a good friend of mine that was a Marine Corps veteran take it and, um, you know, during that pro during the program, he he only attended like two or three of the sessions because he was a busy working professional. But he was dealing with a loss of passion. He didn't know why. You know, we were talking about the why. You know, he he lost his why on why he was doing everything, and uh, he just felt like he was getting stuck in this same old mundane routine of life that a lot of us veterans that get out with this huge vision, but are met with big adversity and humbled by, you know, now we're getting, now we're getting taxed. Now we're not making as much money as we were. Now we don't have as much structure to, you know, inspire, per, you know, powerful behavior for bigger results. Right. So he was in that stage. And what's cool is like the, the few sessions that he did attend, you know, one of these sessions, he got clear on what one of his number one core values were, which was freedom. Once he saw that we as a fire team, not just me, because I'm a big believer on like no one 
and has all the answers. You've got to bring group discussion and different perspectives to keep people unstuck. As a fire team, we came together and he realized that he was living too lives. He was living his mother's life and he wanted to really retire her. And he was like wearing that on his shoulder and he was living his life. And his whole life was, how do I retire my mom? And his life was super significant, not in a good way, heavy. He was caring, like, how can I retire my mom? And once he got clear on his core value, which is what we do in like the first or second session of this program, he started seeing that, wow, you know, I don't have to live. I don't have to live to retire my mom. I can actually live on my own purpose. I can live on my own, you know, accord and my own autonomy and then actually start, you know, start creating that. And the cool thing is, is a month after the program, I mean, he was already thinking of, uh, of a real estate investing firm, but a month afterwards, he had three properties on contract. And then a month after he sold his first wholesale deal. Um, and made over 400% back from the program. So like over here with us, you know, at Vet Training and Coaching, we are a for-profit company. Now, you know, we get a lot of pushback as any veteran that's listening to this probably knows. And, you know, I also see it as a competitive advantage. And this is why. We offer a personal guarantee on any of our programs, meaning that we stand beside our brand. We don't hide behind the grant writers and the volume of veterans that are getting through the program. We focus on the quality of veterans that are not afraid to pay to be pay to play to become more quicker. And we simply plug their drive, their determination and the mission driven, um, you know, um, just core values that we have as veterans. And we plug them into a roadmap and framework that just gives them long lasting tools that create consistent results in every area of life. I mean, Ben, you took the program. What are your thoughts on it? The, the part that I remember the, the, the one that stuck really with was the 12 week, 12 week year that really sometimes, especially there's two sides of being ambitious. There's one that you're, you're, you're far sighted that you can look uh, or near sighted. You can see so far away, but then you can't really see what's right in front of you. And being that ambitious, you need to limit how far you're looking ahead. And the 12 week plan was really that thing that says, okay, you can conquer the world. That's fine. That can happen next year, five years from now. But really you have to focus in the 12 week action plan because that action plan is where the, the momentum happens. And these consistent 12 week plans building up is what's going to get you to that mountain. And there's a whole lot of work that you have to do to get to your desire. And that result from that desire has to happen through that work. You, just because you want to board a boat, you still have to learn how to cross the water. And that's really that 12 week year was the best part of it that helped me frame that you, you can have big ideas, but they require small steps like a weekly podcast that requires doing consistent things every week that gets me to the bigger idea and the bigger vision down the road. Yeah, very. Yeah, exactly. It gives you structure. Um, just like we got in the military to create consistent results in our life. And yeah, this program really is an opportunity for, you know, five to 10 veterans that are aspiring to be top performers in their life, career, business, and really to, you know, uncover the landmines that are stopping them towards becoming that. Not only that, as I always explain that I'm teaching tactics, tools, and concepts bi-weekly, but the weeks I'm not coming in, we have five subject matter experts from leadership development, uh, media, ex uh, media experts. We've got a financial, um, you know, financial guru coming in this upcoming one, and they are really coming in to bring strategy because I get really in the trenches with these veterans and I do the sprint with them. And it's really remarkable for the results to actually come. Now, one thing, Ben, that you don't know that we've changed quite recently is we've completely gamified it now, which means that there is a squad leader promoted on day one that raises their hand, gets kind of like boot camp, right? Um, that says, yeah, I want to be squad leader without even knowing what that actually takes. And what's cool is, is yeah, they, there's a ground rule on how to keep up being the squad leader and you could be fired or hired, rehired at any point of the 12 weeks. But what's really cool is if you do the work, you do the worksheets, you utilize the tools, you know, reach out to the subject matter experts that are coming in to pour the knowledge and wisdom to narrow the gaps and, and really you execute on what matters most to you in your life. 
at the end of the program, we reward the squad leader with an award. Um, the last sprint, we got the squad leader featured on CBS Eye on Veterans, where he gained access to over 4 million veterans nationwide. Because here's one thing I know, it is um, the veterans that put in the work, willing to pay to play, they deserve bigger rewards quicker. And I also know the people that do complete work, do the work, you know, deserve to actually be promoted quicker, right? I always, you know, I, this is one of the golden grenades I share a lot, um, you know, over here on Mind of Things, my network is it's like time will either expose or, or promote you and people. You choose on what to, you know, fill your mind with. I'll throw another golden grenade your way. Um, you know, Benjamin Franklin said, the best return on your money is pouring your purse into your head, right? Where are you not pouring money into, you know, your skill gaps. What are your skill gaps? Do you know your knowledge gaps? Do you know your human capital gaps and, and, and fulfilling those? So you can actually start investing into those programs, mentors, coaches, so you can stay unstuck and unstoppable in your life. So I would just say to any of your listeners, anybody that's listening to this, that's feeling, you know, just frustrated, kind of unfulfilled and just not satisfied, feeling like you're in the same mon mundane routine. You just don't feel like you're living that, that, um, that impactful life. We'll go back to the Superman analogy, that Superman like impact that you felt like when you were serving, I suggest you come in and you apply for the program and anybody that's listening to this on uh, Ben's uh, podcast, I'm willing to give you a 20% scholarship towards this program just because I love Ben. Um, you know, I love what he's doing here. I love the mission of bring every dad home. And I want to help every dad that's listening to this be the man he truly wants to be in life, career, and business. Wow. I wasn't expecting that, Chris. So that is a very generous offer. If people want to find more about this program, where is the best place to go ahead and sign up? They've, you've just ignited the, the spark in their belly and they want to feed that oxygen. Where's the best place on the internet to go find it? Yeah, I appreciate that. VetTrainingCoaching.com. Okay. And then the August or October, what was the date again? October 23rd, 2019. And if they want to get a hold of Chris Hoffman directly, where is the best place? What socials are you on that they could really follow you in? So Facebook and LinkedIn primarily is where you know, you can find me. Um, you can also email me directly. I, I try to make myself extremely accessible. Only thing I would suggest is if you are reaching out to me, be very clear on what you're asking for because we're, we're extremely passionate on taking ambitious vets from warrior made to passion driven by expanding, connecting and have you know, giving you guys the tools and resources to impact. I would suggest email me at choffman at vettrainingcoaching.com. Again, that's choffman at vettrainingcoaching.com. Dot com And if it's not our programs, maybe it's just getting involved in our online communities that reaches 20 plus countries now and 12,000 veterans. I'm sure you will find someone to narrow the gap. Or maybe maybe you're listening to this and you just like, I want to be on your podcast. Email me, tell me your story or what your next mission is and we'll get where, where we'll get you to where you need to go. Well, Chris, this has been almost a complete full circle of three years in the making. I think I was on your podcast at least a year ago. And I remember it was like maybe podcast number two. I was super nervous. I was a can of worms and I had, uh, it was just very unnerving, but at the same time, very of just putting it out there, taking those steps and learning how to talk to people, get those thoughts to words. And your friendship over these last three years has been something that has always helped guide me from where I go because it was where I began. And giving this back to you to help build your ambitious vet tribe up has been a really great pleasure. Oh, Ben, man. Um, kudos goes back to you. I mean, you, you know, back whenever we started becoming friends, I mean, you could have chose to not take action on anything, but you were one of the few that was just like, Hey, this makes sense and started taking action. And now you're starting to reap the rewards of being an action taker and doing the work. So kudos go back to you, brother, super fidelis. And just thank you so much for believing in what we're doing. Well, Chris, thank you for giving us your hour of time tonight. And I look forward to get this thing episode out there on the airwaves. I'm excited too, brother. Thanks for having me. That's a wrap. And thank you for listening to today's show. And I really hope you enjoyed it. The lifeblood of any new podcast are the reviews. If you haven't reviewed the podcast yet on iTunes, I would really appreciate it. And you will help us get the message out to even more military veteran dads. 
As John Maxwell says, if there is hope in the future, there is power in the present. Dads, it's time to come home.